Let's know, though, <coughs> not the Lawrence featured in that last piece of writing. To <laughs> Thinking of the festival themes of uh, difference and desire, uh, these three poems share a tenuous thread of difference, and there's a hint of desire in one of them, which I'll leave you to spot. Uh, though you won't have to try too hard to spot desire in some of the poems which are featured in the anthology, so please do buy the anthology. This first one is called Sarajevo. The cleaning lady in the laundrette is from Sarajevo. Her eyes look out from somewhere older than she is, and her voice has a sad, scouse-like lilt, as though she is singing tears. I don't know why is it, she says, that one sock is left by the people, always. I speculate aloud that this is the minimum sacrifice demanded by the goddess of the washing machine. She nods appreciatively with a faint smile. Her eyes seem to fix on the idea as I say it. The machine behind her pounds on with that timeless tabla rhythm like that produced by Dhobi washerwomen in India and we both sway ever so slightly. This next poem, if I tried to preface this poem, whatever I would say about it is in the poem, so in other words, it, it is from life, and um, this one's about to be published in Orthona magazine. <coughs> it's called This Tap Behaviour, and it might become the um, title poem for my collection. As I close my door, my psychotic neighbour bangs the wall just once to let me know he's in. I move to fill the kettle. He goes at his taps with a hammer, or fists perhaps. It disconcerts me mildly, though this is the lighter end of his range. He runs to shouted threats, fists ground in my face in the street. I call it obsessive compulsive, this tap behaviour. A colleague said it must be. One night last week his tap seemed to stick. He may have left it open, I thought, unusually. I imagined him stopped still and listening to it too. There was no noise coming through, just this plangent song of water, a plumbed release of pressure. A long pining whine keened high through our shared pipes like sacred music. And this last one is not taken from life, and perhaps is therefore all the more true for it. It's called Hope and Anchor. We go to the Hope and Anchor, my peers and I. Instead of sloping off on my own to drink herbal tea in some Persian cafe, I am stuck with artists dropping the burden of names and poets hardening against humour. How awkward we all are together, how disparate. Not even the rising line of Nadia's skirt can save the situation. I hate ending putting off the moment when one will kill the others off with glib goodbyes and the fear of being the last one out, always unvoiced. We leave together, as though being left behind would mean some final existential nightmare, or maybe just a headache. What are others for? My mind founders beneath the low tidal reach of relationship. The long-lasting ones are those in silent boats, the sort which have been pulled back in, empty, cleaned out, no longer smelling of fish. Thank you.